Rabbi Shabsi Alpern is a senior shliach in Brazil. In 1976, one of the members of his community funded the building of a new synagogue at Mikveh. As we finished building the shul in the Mikveh, this man, the man, the husband of Miriam, Henry his name was, fell off a horse on top and hit his head on a rock. He used to love to go, to go horseback riding. And he went into a coma. He was in a coma for 61 days. Every single day, except Shabbos, I used to go to the Jewish hospital where he was being taken care of, and I would hold his hand and say Shema Yisroel with him. Because even though he wasn't religious, he used to put on tefillin every day and say Shema. And Friday I used to say Shabbat Shalom. This went on for two months. The last... Uh, Two Fridays before he came out of the coma, I came there, and the family was all um, together there, and they were making the plans for the funeral, because that Friday he was already there. In those days, it was very difficult to make a phone call to America. You had to wait hours. And I called the Rebbe twice that day to ask for a bracha Friday. And, I, and I, when I saw them planning the details of the funeral, I, clap, I gave a clap on the table. I said, you people are out of your mind. Don't you understand that God has much more to lose than you people have to lose? What do people say in the city? A guy builds a shul, builds a mikvah, and he dies. Don't you understand? God is also smart enough to realize it's not for him. He's going to live. So I called them down. This family had their private Machshefa. Machshefa means a, a witch doctor, a sorcerer, a sorceress. In th those days in Brazil, today very little, but in those days in Brazil, people who, have, people who, who Jews and non-Jews in Brazil are very mystical, superstitious, and they're into these all these black magic things. So many rich Jewish families had their private uh, person who, who knew how to make all these kind of voodoos and things to give them blessings and advice. And I knew that this Miriam had a woman like that called Suzanne in the north of Brazil, a few hours away. So it was Erev Shabbos, Friday, and I'd called the Rebbe twice, and he was very bad. So I said, so I said Miriam, I'm going home now. I have to go for Shabbos soon. I want to tell you something. If you call up Susanna, the situation is very critical, I realize, but if you call up Susanna, Nothing's going to work. Not Susanna and not the Reb. It's going to be a short circuit. It is two different opposite directions. So if you call Susanna, nothing's going to work. Do me a favor. Let's leave it the way it is. I called the Reb twice. She promised me. Shabbos, I finished making Havdalah at the end of Shabbos. Suddenly she knocks on the door and walks in. She was like a breta person. She didn't wait to say come in. She used to walk in totally white. So I realized that he must have passed away on the Shabbos. He, she says, no, he's alive and he's talking. I said, what? No, 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 I'm sorry, not talking. He's better. He's not talking. He's better. So I said, why are you so white? She says, last night at 10 o'clock at night, I couldn't call you. It was the end, and I called up Susanna. I said, no, so what happened? She said, you know what Susanna said? That's why I'm white. Susanna said, what are you bothering me if there's somebody on the other side of the ocean praying for him already. I want to repeat this, it's very important. This woman said, why are you bothering me if there's somebody on the other side of the ocean already praying for him? And the next Friday, when I said Shabbat Shalom to him, he opened his eyes and said Shabbat Shalom. And he lived eight years afterwards.